It's been over two years since we've done Rosato on the channel and that one is extremely outdated. So I have taken it down and we're gonna update it with this version. And this is creamy garlic mushroom risotto. It is extremely delicious, but it is also extremely rich. So I do recommend putting the portion sizes a little bit smaller than you usually would. Also, before we get started, I wanna start changing a few things up on the channel, making it a little bit different and a bit more interesting. So if you do have any suggestions about things you might wanna see me get rid of or even add, just let me know in the comment section down below and I'm happy to do it. Enough of the rambling, please sit back, relax and enjoy. All right, starting off, pour 1.5 liters or six cups of vegetable or chicken stock into a saucepan and I recommend using chicken for better flavor. Take this over to the stovetop, place it onto a high heat and bring it to a boil. In the meantime, we're going to need 15 grams or 0.5 ounces of dried pacini mushrooms. These can be left out as they can be expensive, but this is an ingredient that adds incredible flavor and richness to the dish. With these, add them to a bowl, and once the stock is at a boil, turn it off the heat, scoop out half a cup or 125 milliliters worth, and add it to the pacini mushrooms, giving it a quick mix. This is going to rehydrate the mushrooms, and we're going to let these steep for five minutes. Then after five minutes and the mushrooms have rehydrated, scoop them out, but don't throw away that mushroom stock as that's the depth we need to create the flavor. Give the mushrooms a quick rough chop to break them down, which doesn't need to be super fine. And if you're not going to use these, I'll leave some details in the description about some replacements. Once that's done, place these back into the stock and set aside. Now for the rest of the prep, we need one brown or yellow onion and one rib of celery, and both of these can be ran along the larger side of a box grater, which actually gets the most flavor out of each ingredient as the cells are more broken down, leaving us with this, and in my case, some teary eyes. Next is four cloves of freshly peeled garlic that can also be grated using a microplane, which also extracts the most flavor as the compound called allicin within the garlic is also well broken down. With the mushrooms, we need 450 grams or one pound's worth, and the ones I'm using here are Swiss brown, which are also known as cremini, and all we have to do with these is thinly slice them evenly. That leaves us with all of this that looks like a lot, but these contain a lot of moisture, which will extract and evaporate, making them look a lot less. Here is some fresh herbs, which are 10 grams or 0.5 ounces of flat leaf parsley, 5 grams or 0.3 ounces of thyme, and 4 leaves of sage. These can all just be given a rough chop to break them down, and if your thyme is really woody, you will need to remove the leaves from the stems, and I'll also leave details about substitutes in the description. Last but not least, one lemon is being used, which is optional, but I highly recommend it, and with this, slice it in half and extract the juice, either with a citrus juicer or by hand, making sure no sneaky seeds decide to come for a ride. Now place a large pot over medium high heat, add in one and a half tablespoons or 30 milliliters of olive oil and once hot, add in the thinly sliced mushrooms along with a pinch of sea salt flakes and whilst mixing regularly, saute these for five to six minutes just until they're lightly golden and their moisture has been extracted and evaporated. Next add in the fresh herbs which is leaf parsley, thyme and sage which will add a fresh vibrant flavor and aroma and continue sauteing for one minute mixing regularly, then remove the pot from the stovetop. Transfer the mushrooms and herb mix into a mixing bowl, really making sure to get every last bit in there. Add in the lemon juice for a fresh acidic punch if you're using it, and hit it up with some cracked black pepper. 20 cracks worth. Give this all a quick mix together until everything's combined, then pop this aside for later on in the recipe. Let's then put the same pot back over a medium high heat, add in one and a half tablespoons or 30 milliliters of olive oil, and once hot, add in both the grated onion and grated celery, and whilst mixing regularly, saute for five minutes or until lightly golden. Also, if it does get too much color on it too quickly, just turn down the heat. Next, add in the minced garlic and saute for one minute, mixing the whole time so it doesn't burn, just until it becomes really fragrant. Add in 400 grams or 14.1 ounces of washed aborio rice and toast for one minute to create a light nutty flavor. Make sure you use aborio rice as it is very high in starch, which will allow for a really creamy texture without us actually having to use cream itself. With that done, deglaze the pot with one third of a cup or 80 milliliters of white wine, which can be subbed with veg or chicken stock if you can't consume alcohol, and cook this for one minute just to slightly reduce and pull up any stuck flavors. Once deglazed, add in the pacini mushroom mix with the mushroom stock, mix it well, and cook for one minute. And like I said at the beginning, this is one of the main flavors to this dish, which is absolutely incredible and adds beautiful richness, so I do highly recommend you use it if you can. Now with that stock we heated at the beginning, we're going to add one ladle's worth at a time into the pot and continue mixing until the rice has absorbed it all, which will take roughly one and a half to two minutes. I've seen in the past that some people add cold stock to the pot, but this actually slows down the process which takes longer to cook and easily overcooks the rice as it's not supposed to be gloopy and all stuck together. 
Once absorbed, continue doing this process until you have the last ladle's worth and I'll see you there as you don't need to see me do this for 25 minutes. Alright, with the last bit, add in the remaining stock, but this time only give it a quick mix through. Don't allow the rice to absorb it, otherwise you'll end up with porridge or oatmeal. Then remove it from the stovetop or keep it off the heat. We can then introduce the mushroom mix we made at the beginning, making sure to scrape it all in there to avoid waste. Also adding in 2 tablespoons or 28 grams of unsalted butter to create a really nice smooth texture and gloss. And freshly grated parmesan cheese, which you can add at your own accord, just don't go overboard and I recommend no more than half a cup's worth. Once that's all in, give it a really good mix for those flavours to become friends, and it doesn't need to be completely mixed through as the butter and cheese will slowly melt into it. Before we go any further, be sure to check it for seasoning, adjusting if necessary, adding in sea salt flakes and cracked black pepper, 10 cracks worth, then give it one final mix through. You really can serve this up however you want, doing it in bowls or plates, and you can also cool it overnight and turn it into arancini. Great over some parmesan cheese, because why not? Hit it with some cracked black pepper, use however much you want. Garnish with some chopped flat leaf parsley for a pop of freshness and colour, and a light drizzle of extra virgin olive oil for that finishing touch. This then leaves us with this beautiful, creamy, rich and extremely delicious mushroom risotto, and like I said throughout the video, I'll leave all sorts of notes in the description, so be sure to go check that out. The only thing that's then left to do, is we can then dig in.